In this video, I'm going to be talking about seventh chords. We've already looked at triads, and we know that those are three-note chords. So now we're going to expand our understanding of chords by looking at what are called seventh chords. Seventh chords are essentially four-note chords. Again, there are many types of four-note chords. Seventh chords are one very specific, a very well-defined type of four-note chord. They are, in a sense, connected to triads in that they are the next logical step above triads. And that is best illustrated, again, on the board. If I start with a triad, let's say, for example, C, C, and G, that is a straightforward, well-known triad. We don't have a problem with that. If I want to increase that triad in some way, if I want to add to it, a logical next thing to do would be to put another third on the top. And indeed, that is what happens in music theory after the triad. You add a third of the And in fact, if you want to get into jazz harmony, you go on adding thirds. And you can have chords that go on beyond the seventh chord, adding thirds above the basic triad. Now, we're not going to concern ourselves with those chords at this point in time. That would come down the road. But for our purposes, we are going to look at and, and talk about the seventh chord. So that is going to be a chord that has a triad and essentially an additional third on the top. Now, seventh chords are called seventh chords. You know, it's we're never quite sure who, who or how these names develop, all right? But certainly in this case, the name comes from the distance between the root and the top note when the chord is in its triadic structure. So the distance between C, the root, and B, the top note, is a seventh. So these called chords are called seventh chords because they are, in essence, contained within a seventh interval, an interval of a set. However, they are described as a combination of the triad and the seventh. So you name your seventh chord, this is a seventh chord name, is a combination of triad plus the seventh interval. So the name of the, of the seventh chord is a combination of the triad that you find at the bottom of the seventh chord and the in seventh interval that is between the root and the top note of the seventh chord. So let's look at that specifically here. I'll try and draw this one out a little bit more cleanly for you. Here we have a standard seventh chord. And the name for this seventh chord is going to be a combination of the triad and the seventh interval. So what do we have? Well, hopefully by now, you're familiar enough with triads that you could work out quite quickly what that triad is, C, E, and G. The triad that's on the bottom of this seventh chord is a C major triad. So we are, we're fine with that. The triad equals C major. Okay? Now, hopefully also, you are familiar enough with the concept and idea of, of identifying intervals to be able to tell me relatively easily what the distance between C and B is as an interval. If we, if regardless of these other notes, ignore the E and the G, if I just said to you, what is this interval, what would you call it? And uh, hopefully, as I said, it would not take you too long to work out that that is a major seventh. So the uh, triad equals C major. The seventh equals a major seventh. Right? 
Those are two pieces of information from earlier in our study of music theory that you should know. You should know how to identify triads. You should know how to identify seven intervals. And you need to do those two things in order to find out the name for the seventh chord, because the name for the seventh chord is a combination of those two terms. This is a C major seven, which is actually written in chord symbols like this. But for now, don't even worry about that, because we'll go over the chord symbols in a separate video. Just worry about the fact that when you have, the, you, you should understand that I, you can identify this triad and give it a name, C major. You can identify this seventh, give it a name, major seventh. And that gives you the name of the seventh chord as a C major seventh. So we would refer to this as a C major 7. That is a C chord with a major 7. Does that make sense? A C triad with a major 7th seven, interval. Let's look at some other examples and hopefully this will start to uh, make sense. What if we take this example. Again, split it up. Break it up in your mind. Break it up and you will be able to get the idea of where I'm going with this. So we break it up. We say, first of all, identify the triad. The triad, C, E flat, G. Hopefully, again, not too terribly hard for you to figure out that that is a C minor triad. All right? If you indeed figure that out, then the next thing is, what is the interval of a seventh between C and B flat? What type of seventh is that? The seventh interval in this case is a minor seventh. So this, tri this uh, seventh chord a combination of the lower triad and the interval of a seventh, this seventh chord is called a C minor minor seventh. That's, the, that's how you would say it, C minor minor seven. Again, there's a chord symbol for that. We'll cover that later on. But the C minor minor seven, because it is a C minor triad and a C minor seven. Again, the name is a combination of the lower triad and the seventh interval. Let's try another one, just again, get the feel for it, okay? What about this one here? What do we have here? Again, we're going to identify the triad, we're going to identify the seventh interval. The triad in this case, C, E, G, we've already identified it earlier in this video, so that is a C major triad, that's the triad, the seventh between C and B flat, what is that interval, what is the interval between C and B flat, it is a minor seventh, so seventh equals a minor seventh, that in combination equals a C major minor seven. C major minor seven. Combination of the lower triad, C major, and the upper seventh minor. Now, I've done two or three of those and I, I've explained the other. So now hopefully you have the concept, you know how to identify any seventh chord. If I just put a seventh chord up, you could, identi you could identify it if it was, there. there's some, you know, very weird, odd ones. You come up with a 
C augmented minor seventh or something like that. And certainly those are all theoretically possible seventh chords. But there is a certain set of seventh chords that c occur most often. And they occur most often because they are generally found uh, existing in connection with being in a particular key, being in C major or being in D major or whatever it might be. So rather than me going through all the possible seventh chords that there are, as long as you understand the concept for how you would identify a seventh chord, then really the next step is simply to identify the most commonly used seventh chord. So in this video, right now, I want you to get the concept. How do you describe any seventh chord? Get the concept that it is a combination of the lower triad and the seventh interval. That those two things in combination with each other give you the name for the chord. In this case, the triad is major, the seventh is minor, C major minor seven. It's C because that's the root, it's major because that's the triad, it's minor seventh because that's the interval of a seventh. If you can get that, and you can begin to identify some various seventh chords that way, or create some of your own seventh chords using this principle, uh, then that would be a good starting point at this point in time. In the next video, we'll identify the limited number of seventh chords that we tend to use in the styles of music we're going to be looking at. Thank you.